morning students my name is vivek tomar and i am assistant professor in department of computer science and engineering at kite group of institutions ghaziabad so today we will be discussing this topic maximile encoding so this is going to be our contents first we will see the introduction of maximile encoding then different uh, types uh, of maximile encoding that is classification of maximile encoding at last we will see run length coding so as we are already aware the facsimile or uh, it is also known as uh, most of the time we call it as fax so it is a document that is uh, sent over the telephone line okay and compression of this fax is actually one of the uh, very common and very uh, earliest applications of uh, lossless compression so what exactly we do in facsimile uh, encoding or uh, what exactly we do to send a fax basically we scan a page and then convert that page into a sequence of some some collection of black and white pixels now uh, we talk about the classification of facsimile encoding so what we have uh, on the basis of uh, now how we are doing this classification like how much uh, time is required to transmit a a4 size document over the phone line so on the basis of that we have divided this into four groups uh, namely uh, group 1 group 2 group 3 and group 4 group 1 and group 2 are basically the kind of analog scheme and group 3 and group 4 will be the uh, will be put under digital scheme so if we talk about group 1 so group 1 uh, in group 1 the apparatus is actually capable of transmitting uh, a4 size document in about 6 minutes over a telephone line using analog scheme and this group 1 has been standardized in p.2 recommendation then we have group 2 so obviously group 2 is a kind of advanced uh, you can say advanced version of group 1 and it is capable of transmitting the same a4 page in about 3 minutes again over the analog uh, scheme using the analog scheme and over the telephone lines and this is being standardized in uh, recommendation p.3 so as i have already told you these two group 1 and group 2 uh, were actually the analog scheme so there was no data compression involved in, in these schemes. then we came to group 3 again group 3 and group 4 are basically a kind of uh, digital digital scheme and there we have used the data compression techniques so what we have done in uh, Uh, group 3 in this we have used a apparatus which is using a digitized binary representation of the fax whatever fax we want to send we will use the digitized binary representation of it and obviously it will use the data compression and uh, uh, it requires about a minute for the transmission right and again this has been standardized in recommendation p.4 so if, if we talk about like p.4 and uh, Uh, 3.6 basically these two involves the data compression then the last one is group 4 and uh, group 4 is like uh, it is having the same kind of requirements uh, same speed requirements were there in group 4 as uh, in group 3 and it has been standardized in recommendation t1 so we can see here like when we are using the data compression in group 3 and group 4 obviously the time has been significantly reduced to send a uh, particular a4 page over the network so time has been significantly reduced and group 3 and group 4 were basically using the data compression now who is responsible for this standardization so it was done by initially we call it ccitt now it is called as itu basically what is itut that is telecommunication standardization by international telecommunication union 
it is an organization that is actually responsible for uh, for standardizing the things that are related to this this telecommunication so this was the classification of facsimile encoding now one of the application of facsimile encoding is run length encoding so i hope everyone remembers this uh, two state uh, markov model this already we have discussed uh, during the types of model in the unit 1 So what it is having, it is actually a two-state model for binary images, where we may have a pixel as a black or as a white pixel. So uh, what it signifies, if you really recall it, like we are having two states. So one is S W. Basically, S W is indicating the state that is corresponding to the to a pixel to be a white pixel, and uh, S B is the state corresponding. the pixel to be a black pixel then we are having the probabilities uh, so transition probabilities were also there like if we say p b by w so it actually indicates like if the current pixel is is white then what is the probability of the next pixel uh, is going to be a black pixel what is the probability of the next pixel to be a black pixel similarly if we, if we talk about p w y b so that actually indicates if the current pixel is a black pixel then what is the probability of the next pixel to be a white pixel similarly we have p w y w and uh, we have p b y so this is also known as capon model for binary images so model that gives rise to run length coding is actually a two state markov model with Uh, states as w and as p so this i have already told you what exactly they refer to and what exactly we need uh, we need transition probabilities and uh, probability of, of being in in a particular state like uh, if if we talk about p w by p so as already i have told you that is the transition probabilities like if the current pixel is a black pixel then what is the probability that the next pixel is going to be a white we talk about the individual probabilities like p s w so that is what what is the probability of current pixel to be a white pixel so here we are not considering the previous pixel right? that is the that is the difference now what happens for facsimile images for facsimile images obviously uh, these values p w y w means if the current pixel is a white pixel then next is also going to be a white pixel and if the current pixel is a black pixel then next is going to be a white pixel so these two quantities or these two probabilities are significantly higher than the other probabilities right now what happens generally if we talk about like you know, dependency if a particular pixel is a black pixel or maybe a white pixel so it is very you know it is uh, of very high probability or it is very uh, it is highly likely that the next pixel is going to be of the same so there is a kind of dependency between the next pixel and the previous pixel so we are going to use this property when we will be doing the encoding so what we will do actually uh, what run length coding says it says like rather than coding the pixel separately rather rather than coding the pixels separately or we call it individually what we will do we will simply code the length of run of each one right like if if we take one example if we try to understand this with the help of example suppose we are having 190 white pixels then followed by 30 black pixels and 210 white pixels so what we will be doing like rather than encoding all the pixels individually we will we code this sequence 190 30 200 10 and we code this sequence along with the indication of color at the very starting like we know 190 is actually the white pixels so we'll encode the value 190 along with the color value then we'll encode the uh, value 30 along with the color value so this is how we are going to reduce the the overall requirement of the data for representing this so this kind of representation is known as 
run length coding and again that is a part of hexamyl encoding. So this was all about hexamyl encoding, its classification and run length coding. Thank you so much.